Hi everyone and thank you for joining WCI Consulting's webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about multiple data sources into a 4.0 universe. Uh, this is in a continuation of our previous uh, tips, tricks, and best practices with uh, you know the universes and uh, business objects in general. Uh, if you have any questions during the uh, session, please feel free to use the question or chat box at the very end. Uh, any questions that we don't address during the actual presentation, then we'll go ahead and address them at the end. Uh, if they're very particular or very, um, you know, su uh, system orientated, uh, you can take them offline. Uh, you have my email address, Trent Wortham, uh, and then also we'll provide our email addresses at the very end. Uh, today we're going to have Neil Dave talking about uh, the different ways to bring multiple data sources into a 4.0 universe. Uh, to start off with, I always like to show our mission statement. Uh, we firmly stand behind this, and you know we always like to let our uh, clients and people in our community always know what we stand for. Uh, here's a little bit of ba background for WCI Consulting. Um, for the last two years, we've won Business Objects Partner of the Year from SAP. We're very proud of that. Uh, we're hoping to go ahead and do it again this year. Uh, you have any questions about uh, our instant access business intelligence? It's a new program that we have. We're very excited about. Uh, gives you access to a business intelligence consultant uh, anytime during the workday um, and potentially after uh, that you don't necessarily have to have be paying for a full time resource. Uh, you know, we're very excited about it. Uh, please visit our website if you have any questions or if you have any uh, concerns or anything like that. You want to talk to us about it? Uh, feel free to reach out to us. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Neil, and he is going to show us multiple data sources into a 4.0 universe. Thanks, Trent. Um, as Trent mentioned a little earlier, uh, if you attended the first two uh, webinars regarding the tips and tricks uh, for Business Objects Universe Designer, then this, uh, this is a continuation of how this works within 4.0. And the reason why we had a two-part series the last time is because of the fact that in BitSoftics 4.0, the look and feel of it is, is different. And so the concepts that you've learned from such as uh, creating a universe connection to creating objects um, within uh, your classes, uh, those types of things and creating your joins become very, become very beneficial because that's going to help you uh, bridge that gap from 3.0 to 4. Uh, 3.0 to 4.0. In um, 4.0, the uh, look and feel of the universe designer has uh, changed uh, significantly to now where there's a tool called information design tool. And one of the things we, we want to talk about first and right off the bat is the differences between the universe design tool, which is similar to universe designer from the uh, older versions of business objects from year 6.5 to XIR2 to year 3.0 environment. Uh, comparing the universe design tool to information design tool. And what I have here on the screen here is my business objects 4.0 universe design tool. Now they renamed it to universe design tool as opposed to designer 4.0. And from the first two uh, webinars that we uh, performed, you'll notice that's pretty much the same as your 3.0 and XR2 environment. Um, with, with that being said, one of the biggest uh, similarities is that um, under your file parameters, you're creating one data source for one universe here. So that becomes different when we talk about the information design tool, where you can have multiple data sources in order to create a, a universe itself to where you can uh, create joins from different tables. So that's what we're going to basically talk about today is the information design tool. And so in here, I'm in, under the universe, uh, universe design tool. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to toggle back to the information design tool. And this is, uh, keep in mind, this is also a client tool. So if you install the client tool, this will be under your start program, under that menu. Okay, so in here in the information design tool, as you can tell, it's significantly different than the universe design tool. Um, one of the things that they talk about in 4.0 is that um, what, in order to create multiple data sources, it has to be organized into projects. Uh, business layer, I'm sorry, uh, projects, data foundations, and then business layer. So when we go through the demo of information design tool, um, that's going to make a little bit more sense to you as we go through it. So the first thing we have to do is create a project. Now what a project does is it 
stores your uh, data, uh, your data foundation, and your business uh, layer, along uh, also with your connections into one project folder. So it's just an easier way of organizing things. Um, so what I'm going to have to do first is I'm going to go to File and go to New Project right here, and then I'm going to call this uh, Conversion of UNV File to UNX. Okay, so I need to. So what we're going to do today is the actual demo. What we're going to talk about today is we're converting two existing business objects universes into UNX files. Now the reason the difference between a UNV and UNX file is that that allows the UNX file allows you to have multiple data sources into one um, universe. So that's the big difference between the UNV, which has been your standard uh, files when you when you build universes in the past. They have a file extension of a UNV, and, but when you're creating multiple data sources, it converts it into a UNX file. So like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take two existing universes. We're going to take the two connections that they run through, the universe connections, and then we're going to create a universe based off those two connections. Okay? So what the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go to File. I'm going to make sure my project is highlighted. Go back to File and Convert UNV Universe. And then it's going to ask me to where do I want to pull that universe from. I can either pull it locally from my local PC or I can pull it straight from the repository. And that's what I'm going to do here is pull it from the repository. And once um, I log into the repository, now the list of universes come up here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the universe from the Webby universe folder. So the first one is going to be the Island Resorts Marketing Universe. Hit OK there, and I'm going to hit Browse here for the destination folder. So it's saying, okay, once the universe has been converted, where do you want to place that uh, converted universe? So I'm just going to select the Report Conversion Tool uh, subfolder, and then hit OK here. And then Destination lo uh, Local Project Folder. So that's say asking which project do I want to place this conversion into. And I'm going to click Browse, and I've only got one here, which is the conversion of UNX or UNV to UNX. And then I'm going to select these options as well. So uh, convert any app problem expressions into universe name parameters. So if you work with uh, universes and you're using app prompts in the universes, it automatically converts those prompts for you. So once I hit OK here, you can go through a process of converting it from the UNV to a UNX file. Usually, depending on how big or small the universe takes. I'm going to go and hit close here. It says it was completed successfully. All right. I'm going to hit no for right now. And then I'm going to go back into my project here. And then what you notice right off the bat is that in my project, it tells me that, okay, I've got a universe. This is icon is denoted by the rational connection. So this is the universe connection uh, that's using to pull in the data. And then if I click on here, the icon here is denoted by your universe or your business layer. So these extensions, this is the BLX as a business layer. And then in here, it's the data foundation layer. Okay or data foundation, excuse me. So that's what these three things do, and they break it down into, or they're placed into this uh, UN, or this project. So that's where the significance of creating a project comes into play. Okay, so like I mentioned, we're going to create another con uh, conversion. So I'm going to convert the other universe, which will be the eFashion universe. And again, I'm going to pull it from the, uh, even though we have one here, I'm just going to pull it from the web, uh, Webby universe. Click on eFashion, hit OK here. I'm going to browse, place that back into the report conversion tool. All right. And I'm going to again place that in the conversion of UNX to UN, uh, UNV to the UNX project. I'm going to save for all users and automatically convert prompts. All right. So it says it completed. And once I get out of the screen, You'll notice that I have another project, or another, I'm, not, I'm sorry, another um, business layer with connection information and data source. Now, you can find this, if you go up here to the tab, you'll notice that the island market uh, business layer is right here. That's because it's the last one I connected on. If I double click on connection name, it shows me the connection name, and it places all that information right up here. Okay? So it tells me the connection name. If I need to test the connection or change it, I can do that. Uh, the business layer, if I double click on that again, what that does is pulling in all the classes and all the objects that were created from that universe into this location right here. Okay? And 
And I can also look at the um, parameters and list of values that are associated to it. Uh, right now we don't have anything in here, but you can definitely go through this and you can, you can find the similarities between that and also the uh, universe, uh, universe design tool or designer because a lot of the same things are going to be placed in here. It's just, again, it's the look and feel is slightly different. It's different. Um, so if I click on data foundation in here, what I'm seeing in here is that the, uh, the joins and the tables that are being brought over. Okay? So these are all the joins that are associated with it. And if you look up here, it tells you all the tables and the specific joins that have been made in there for you. Okay? All right? So what we're going to do now is I'm going to create another project and I'm going to combine the two connections into one project. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is just I'm going to go back and create a new project. And then let's say, let's call this a multi-source uh, conversion. Oh, I'll just say multi-data source. Okay, let's finish here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to close these. I don't need these right now. And I'm going to copy the connection information. So just hit copy, right-click, hit copy. I'm going to right-click on the project and hit paste here, all right? And then I've got copy right here. And I'm going to right-click, hit copy on this one. And again, hit paste. And now I've got two conversions. I've got two connections. Now, here's where I, I'm able to combine those two into one universe. So what I've got to do now is I've got to go back to File. I'm, I'm in the same project. Go to File, New, uh, Data Station. And then I'm going to call this, um, let's say combine data, let's say combine connections here. All right. Hit next. And now it's asking what source are you using? Are you using a single connection or multi-source? In our case, we're going to use a multi-source. So when I click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to look in that project and it's going to look for um, what have I selected, what connections do I have in here? And as you can tell, I do have two connections. So I'm going to check both of those. Hit next. Okay, now what's doing here, it's going to identify, it's letting me know that the eFashion universe or the eFashion connection, all the tables associated to it are highlighted in blue. All right? Um, I can change that color if I want to. If I hit the drop down, completely up to you. And then the next, if I hit next here, the eFashion, I'm sorry, the uh, Club eFashion data source, in this case, um, is going to be orange. So all the tables that I decide to bring in, are going to be denoted by that color. So I'm going to say that's fine, hit uh, finish. Now it's, it's bringing in those data information. Okay, so now I have a data foundation. Now I can, I have my two connections here, and now I can insert my tables. So if I go insert tables, it's going to ask me what tables do you want to bring in. All right, it's going to take a second to come up. So let's say, okay, yeah, article lookup, color lookup, article, let's see here, calendar, Outlet and shop and promotion lookup. Okay, so from that table, I'm going to bring those in, and now I'm going to go ahead and bring in some of these as well. Make sure. Oh, I accidentally selected all those. Try it again. Okay, so under the club e fashion source, I'm just going to select. Cities, country, customer, invoice line, and say region, re, uh, resort, sales, salesperson. Okay. So it's asking me to. I also have the option now that I'm bringing these two sources or data connections. I can detect the key, uh, detect row count, detect joins, detect cardinality. The reason why I'm not going to select these two right now is because um, I'm going to hit finish here. The reason why I'm not doing that is because these two data, uh, these two universes don't necessarily talk to each other. Um, they're not uh, the rational databases don't exactly make sense. So a sense of like uh, creating joins and stuff in here wouldn't wouldn't really be beneficial. So so what, one thing you need to keep in mind though is when you're combining two sources, make sure that that the two universes or two data uh, bases can talk to each other in order to make sure that you create one specific universe in this case, and then create your join. So if you need to manually create your joins, you can do that. Again, this color right here, remember, in blue, 
is coming from this e fashion webby uh, connection and then the club e fashion is denoted in orange so those are the tables that are coming in from there so again I'm gonna I'm gonna manually create a join for you but I wouldn't um, this would not be a, a good join just because we don't have their uh, rational database on here so what I would do is, for example, if Outlook lookup table was going to city, which most likely it would, I would just click right there. Oh, probably. Okay, yeah. So that's one way you can create a join. Just manually um, drag it over, and you've got a join right there. And then if you click on it, you can. Uh, whoops, you can. Yep, highlight it in yellow, and then you can uh, detect the cardinality on here too. Right. So if I hit the detect button, similar to the uh, universe design, you have the same type of uh, structure there. So you can detect the cardinality and then decide where you want to go from there. All right. So in this case, like I said, the cardinality for this one may not be okay just because the, the two uh, databases aren't talking to each other. Um, but yeah, you can manually type in your cardinality just like you could do in the, in the older versions of this object. Okay. So in here, once I've got that created, I can also uh, go ahead and create my um, uh, business layer. And that's, again, done by going highlighting your project, which I've done right there, and then going to New, and then Business Layer. And then we're going to say it's a Rational Data Foundation. And then I'm just going to call this Multi-Source Universe. Hit Next. It's going to ask for the data foundation. In this case, it's this one that we use. Hit OK. All right. And it's, I can detect if I'm going to manually create folders and objects. Sure. Why not? We'll take a look at it. All right. And then once I click on the business layer, then I can start creating my um, folders and create my contents from there. Okay. So that's basically how it works for your uh, business layer in here. And so. With that, you've got your connections, and then you can start building your uh, universes from that case. And then once you're done, you can go to File, and then uh, Publish to the repository. Okay. So uh, once you've done that, you've got your universe um, in a U and X uh, location. Now, a couple of quick things here. Um, it's up to you. If you have a universe, one single source universe, um, it's up to you if you you can pull that into the information design tool. You don't have to necessarily use the universe design tool, but if you are going to create multiple data sources, then you have to use the information design tool. That's how it's going to work. Um, it just depends um, if you want to. Again, going back to the single source, if you want to use single source, then it's kind of up to you. If you like the new look and feel of the information design tool, then you can do that in here. Um, but if you prefer the other one, that's fine too. Uh, SAP did not get rid of the Universe Design Tool or Universe Designer because of that. So you do have that option as well. All right, uh, that's all I had. Trent, I will pass it back to you. All right, it would help if I took myself off mute. Well, thank you very much, Neil. Uh, if you have, anyone has any questions, please go ahead and... Um, uh, put them in that right-hand panel right there, and uh, let's see here. Um, so, Neil, uh, one question that we have here is: with the 4.0 universe, um, how? I guess this would be more of an upgrade question. Um, how much conversion would there be from the three from the 3.1 to 4.0? That's a that's a very good question. Um, it's yes. Uh, what you would have to do is you'd have to um, run something in 4.0 called the upgrade management tool. What that does is it, com it converts all your, um, it imports all your uh, universes from 3.1 into 4.0. And then from there, you'll have them accessible to uh, designer, within designer. So yes, you will be using a, a upgrade management tool to get that taken care of. Okay. Uh, 